G'day there guys, I can resist anything but temptation. It's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now, now if you enjoy today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and ask yourself, who is the a-hole in today's stories? Let's go. Our first post is by user, love am I the a-hole, titled, am I the a-hole? I am dying and want to have a catch-up with my first love. So for starters, I, 32 female, am dying due to cancer. It was diagnosed pretty late after two weeks of severe stomach pain and throwing up after every meal. At the stage I'm in, doctors have suggested palliative care rather than any treatments, which I'm sad about. But that's life, eh? I'm from one of the countries where marriage is arranged, rather than the western way. I was in love with someone, A, when I was 18 to 19 years old. Though he was from the same community as I am, my parents did not agree to it due to his economic background, which was a few steps below us. My parents fixed my marriage with my husband, B, and we've been married for 12 years now. We don't have any kids, and B doesn't know about A as my ex-boyfriend, but knows A as he's quite well known in our small city. He never asked me about my previous love affairs, since that's very taboo in my culture, and I lied by omission? A remains single and is now a professor in our local university. He's gained quite a name by mentoring young people and directing them in the right studies and career path. Now I have done everything I need to do, my legal and financial stuff is sorted, and I've spoken to my husband on what I need him to do. Get married again, don't think of it as a betrayal to my memory, and don't ask if my parents are okay with it, etc. Now with people walking around me on eggshells, I have been thinking a lot about A, and I really want to spend some time with him. A couple of hours and have a meal and walk down memory lane. If he's willing, of course. I mean, I don't know. I feel like do what you like, but on the other hand, I feel like it's selfish. My husband worships the ground I walk on, and I love him. But A is like that childhood crush on your favourite actor, or sportsman, or first love in high school, which should be stored in a tiny corner of your heart and brings a wistful smile. I'm just conflicted if I would be the a-hole if I tell my husband about A and this wish of mine. TLDR... I'm dying, and I feel like having a chat with my first love. And note, my intention is just to have a chat and a meal with just him. I have two palliative care surgeries and two bags in my lower tummy, so nothing physical or like an affair, and it would be in my home. No, I think it's completely understandable, and if he wants to have a date with you and just hang out for a few hours... You've already laid the groundwork with your husband, and your husband loves you enough to realize that this is just a normal request. If I were in his shoes, I'd absolutely be fine with you doing this, because it's not cheating, and you're going to be dying anyway. And there's no other party here that would be an a-hole, I guess, so my judgment would be no a-holes here. And in the comments, no nano nay says, no a-holes here. I don't know if it's a good idea to tell your husband exactly what your relationship with A was, however, I would just tell him that you want to spend time with your friends before you leave, A being one of them. You were friends years ago, even if that included a crush. No a-holes here. As long as the intention is catching up with an old friend, not a quick affair before you pass. And OP says, oh no, let me edit my post. Thank you for your judgement. I can't go outside. I have some bags attached to my body. Then absolutely no a-holes here. And Hunter of Shadows says, No a-holes here. I can't in good faith call you an a-hole for wanting this, but I do think it would be a mistake to contact him. While it could go well and be a pleasant afternoon, it's far more likely that it will either be incredibly awkward or incredibly painful for both of you. People love the idea of this sort of thing, and in movies and TV shows, it usually goes well. Reality, unfortunately, is often far different. I also think it will create a lot of tension and issues amongst living, which is a selfish thing to do, dying or not. I'm sorry you have to deal with this, OP. 
may your spirit find rest in whatever lies beyond. And OP replies, Thank you. I'm very scared thinking about what will happen, you know, afterwards. But I understand where you're coming from, and I appreciate your views. What will happen afterwards is up to you and your beliefs. It's your decision. Our culture does believe in soul never dies philosophy and approach death philosophically, but I still don't know. I'm scared of the unknown. Though doctors say I would be knocked off with painkillers, probably. And now to the update. Hi, this is S's husband, and she passed away after five weeks of posting this. I just looked into this account slash phone before two days, and she never told me about A herself. But we lived in a small town, and everyone knows about everyone's business, including rumours. So I kind of knew about this vaguely. A did come to see her as a courtesy once her illness became known to people in our place. She was a very nice human being, a dutiful wife and daughter, and I really miss her. She was also my best friend and confidant. She was a genuinely nice and kind person, and she deteriorated quite quickly post her diagnosis. I just saw this account in her phone, and am planning to have a chat with A to see if he would be willing to organise a scholarship, paid by me with her inheritance, in her memory, to sponsor the higher education of a few kids every year and make them self-sufficient. This is something she wanted to do. I'm still not sure if I should tell A that I know their history, but that's a different discussion for a different day. I wish she had been one of those miraculous recoveries where doctors aren't even sure how something happened. She was a very warm and loving person, and thanks to everyone who had messaged her asking for updates and checking in on her. Thanks again. And in the comments, I don't know what to put as my name says, you're reacting wonderfully to the news of her past relationship. I think it would have made her very happy to know you were so supportive of something she seemed nervous about. I'm sorry for your loss. I agree. It seems obvious that you were just as kind as she made you sound in her first post. I'm sorry for your loss, and I think it's amazing of you to see her good intentions and to honour her with a scholarship. I wish you all the best in the future. And Space Grotto says, Thank you for updating us. I'm very sorry about your loss. We only got her for a couple paragraphs and could sense her warmth and kindness through her words. I'm glad you got to live in that sunlight with her. What a gorgeous sentiment. I couldn't agree more. In such a short post, I feel like we saw a great deal of her spirit and the kind of person she was. And Teal Housewife says, This is a beautiful update. Thank you so much for posting. I'm incredibly sorry for your loss. It sounds like you and your wife had a great deal of love and respect for one another. I think creating a scholarship in her honour is a beautiful way to pay tribute to her. And our next post is by user Throw RA Bunch of Numbers, titled Am I the A-hole for not staying at work even though I was scheduled to be off for the afternoon? Throw away because I don't know if any co-workers are on Reddit or not. I'll try to be somewhat vague for privacy reasons. This happened yesterday, and it's still bugging me. So with the global pandemic going on, there's been low censusing people at my work, which basically means some people go home early slash arrive later in the day, and they don't get paid for those missing hours. Thankfully, they take turns with low census, so it's not just the same person getting shafted each time. Yesterday, it was my turn to be a low census for that afternoon, and I was actually looking forward to it. I had some phone calls I needed to make, and I needed to study for a huge upcoming test. So this was the perfect opportunity to work on that. However, when I got into work that morning, I saw that I had been scheduled on for the whole day, despite the fact I was supposed to be off in the afternoon. Puzzled, I asked my boss what was going on, and she explained that one of my co-workers called in sick, so they needed me to stay. This bugged me because they didn't inform me of this at all. No phone call, email, or anything. I had to find out by checking the schedule the morning I came in. Here's where I might be the a-hole. I explained to my boss that I had already made plans for the afternoon, and I couldn't stay. 
She got all huffy with me, and in addition to trying to guilt trip me into staying, she said we weren't allowed to make plans on low census days for that reason. In the end, I still got to go home early, but I checked my union contract because I was curious, and lo and behold, it states that we aren't required to be on standby for low census days. What's more, if we are on standby, we're entitled to receiving standby pay, which is about 1.5 times our regular hourly wage. My co-workers had similarly been annoyed when I told them what our boss had said to me, so I shared this information with them, and they will more than likely be informing our boss of this clause. Yeah, I'm going to go with not the a-hole here. It kind of seems obvious with that contract and knowing your rights in this situation that you're backed by the union. So absolutely this boss knew that they were just trying to get away with some bullcrap, and that's absolutely not on you for fighting back against them. Those laws and protections are there to obviously protect you from being taken advantage of by your boss. It's unfortunate that they tried to weasel their way into getting you to stay, by, you know, surprising you with it when you got into work, but ultimately, it's not your problem. You did the right thing here, and you deserve to have that time off when you were told you could have that time off. So, not the a-hole. Edit. Holy crap, you guys. I leave for a couple of hours to go to a doctor's appointment, only to come back to a flooded inbox. I'd like to thank everyone who commented and offered judgment and support. I'm very tender-hearted, and I don't like it when people are mad at me, so it gives me comfort in knowing that I didn't do anything wrong. I actually have a meeting with management tomorrow that's for a completely different crap show of a story. To be brief, basically, management tried to write me up for failure to improve on feedback, but they completely botched the process and didn't follow the proper protocol at all. So HR threw it out. I don't doubt for a second that they might try to start the process again tomorrow, and I wouldn't be shocked if this came up during the meeting. If it does, I'll just mention the union clause and leave it at that. I consulted with my father on what to do tomorrow, and he advised me to go in with a level head, and if they start talking like they want to pursue punishment, shut it down immediately by requesting a union representative. Legally, once a union representative has been requested, Management can't continue with the meeting. He also advised me that if I do, and they continue with the meeting in spite of it, don't say anything. Let them dig their own grave, and the second I get out of there, contact high management and tell her what happened, and possibly even my union, depending on how things go. This woman not only actually knows my dad, and is on relatively friendly terms with him, but in simple terms... She's also basically the boss of my supervisor and my administrator, and she's essentially in charge of how the whole facility is run, and determines whether or not we get to stay open during the pandemic. Not the kind of person you want to have mad at you. She's very fair and kind, and she's actually the one I contacted when they tried to write me up, and she investigated everything on my behalf, and was the one to tell management that they couldn't do this. Because of this... She's already pissed at my supervisor and my administrator for how they handled things, and the poor girl will probably have an aneurysm if they pull something like this tomorrow, especially since she already talked to my supervisor about how she handled things. With all of this in mind now, I'm actually kind of excited to see how this meeting will go tomorrow, because if management Fs up again, it will not go well for them. I'll update this post again tomorrow when I get home from work with how everything went. Edit. Okay, I just got back from work a bit ago. So here's the update I promised. Buckle in because holy crap, it's a doozy. This will probably be my last update on this post. I'll more than likely make a new post once the dust settles and all this, in hopefully a week or two. So I had my meeting with management today, and just as I suspected, they still weren't happy, and seemed to be interested in pursuing punishment. They're also still pissy that I refused to stay on my low census day, so I simply mentioned the clause in my contract and left it at that. These women then had the nerve to say, your contract isn't as important as your work. To make a long story short, I didn't like where the meeting was going, so I requested a union representative. These people not only denied my request, but said it wasn't necessary to have a union representative for an investigatory meeting. 
I kept my mouth shut because at that point, they literally dug their own graves. The second I got out of there, I messaged high management and explained everything that happened and point blank told her that I'm not only being bullied and harassed, but they blatantly violated my wine garden rights and this was not okay, nor would it be tolerated. I told her that I'd be contacting my union about this and I swear, although she was very polite and sympathetic when talking to me, I could hear this woman burst a blood vessel through the screen. She thanked me for telling her this, and she said she'd be speaking to HR about this. She also said that I was well within my rights to contact my union about this. Unfortunately, I was busy today, so I didn't get a chance to call them, but I am definitely calling them tomorrow. When I got home from work, I filled my dad in on everything that happened, and I'm pretty sure he had a stroke when I told him all of this because he's just as shocked, if not more so, at the sheer ineptitude of my management and how badly they just screwed up. He went on to explain that since they violated my rights in that meeting, they can't use any of the things we discussed about against me in a write-up or other punishments, and he agreed with me that they are being extremely nitpicky. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen now, but I do know that I will be contacting my union tomorrow, and I'll be speaking with high management again, and tell her that from here on out, I refuse to attend any meeting with management unless she and a union representative are present with me, because this is ridiculous. I am fully expecting this to end up being quite the crap storm, and this is only the beginning. My supervisor and administrator have no clue what they've unleashed and what they're in for and I'm more excited than I should be to sit back with popcorn and watch how their own hubris comes back to tear them down. And edit 4, final update, I swear. I just wanted to clear up some confusion I've seen in the comments. To start, the reason I didn't go to the union right off the bat when all of this started months ago was because at the time this first began, I had no idea they were even planning on writing me up and that the weekly meetings we were having were essentially setting me up for this. I genuinely thought the meetings were to help me. If I'd known this is what would have come from them, I would have declined from the beginning. Secondly, at the time they had first tried to write me up, they hadn't necessarily violated my contract. Unfortunately, being a crappy boss that doesn't follow protocol isn't really a breach of contract. Plus, I wanted to try and solve this without getting the union involved anyway. I'm not out here to get people in trouble. I only want to be treated fairly and to keep my job, and I thought that after what had happened with the write-up, high management had taken care of it and it wouldn't be a problem anymore. Sadly, this was clearly not the case. Yes, my dad is a bit of a jerk, he's pretty jaded and not one to make decisions with emotions, he's made a lot of decisions in life that have hurt me and my family, including divorcing my mother and leaving my family to move to the other side of the state, but I can't find it in me to truly hate him, and for what it's worth, he does know his stuff. My dad was always very intelligent and business-oriented. My grandma, in fact, once said he could sell snow to an Eskimo. He knows exactly how these things work, and how to make an enemy or a friend out of management. His advice and coaching is actually a big reason I even have this job to begin with, and he's actively helping me keep it by advising me on how to navigate this situation and what to say or do. He was actually the one who suggested that I start documenting everything that I could after my write-up meeting. He only advised me to not go straight to the union for everything, because in the eyes of HR, that shows that you're willing to work with them to a degree instead of heading straight for the big guns. And they really like that, so they'll be more inclined to be on my side if things go sideways. He said that it's best to contact the union when they explicitly breach my contract, as that will give me more weight in my complaints, and he actually told me to report all of this to my union after I told him everything that went down today. Well, that was a mouthful. Now on to the updates. Hello again. I'd like to start by thanking everyone who commented and offered advice. I did my best to respond to as many as possible. I actually forgot about the initial post until today when I discovered that I was low census again. On to the update. Since my last update on my first post, I managed to get in contact with the union rep, and I swear to god I love this woman. 
She's an older woman who not only knows what she's doing, but takes absolutely no crap from anyone. I'll call her Sylvia for the sake of simplicity. Shortly after my previous meeting with management, I was invited to an investigatory meeting with my supervisor for an unrelated incident. Basically, a client was pissed that I wouldn't let them do something that posed a liability to the company, so they complained to management. Sylvia went in with me and made sure that I got to fully explain my side of the story. Nothing came of the meeting, thankfully, but afterwards, Sylvia pointed out several things to me that she noticed about me during the meeting that I honestly never noticed. The biggest one being that the way I spoke and carried myself was like watching someone wrestle with the innermost depths of trauma, and that it was honestly heartbreaking to watch because she could so visibly see how stressed and desperate I was getting towards the end. After she said that, I took some time to reflect on my life. I actually had a pretty good childhood, I was never physically abused or anything. The only part that sticks out to me where this possibly could come from is a period when my mum dated this loser who was actually quite emotionally abusive to me when I look back on it now. He and my mother would regularly gang up and tear into me about my grades to the point where I'd cry myself into hysterics trying to explain myself, and then he'd take away all my electronics and sometimes wouldn't give them back for several weeks, leaving me with little to do and no way to contact my friends or anything outside of school. I plan on talking to my mum about this at some point, preferably when I can see her in person again, because I'm positive she has no idea about any of this and it would absolutely crush her to know that I am now dealing with emotional trauma that's affecting me as an adult as a direct result of her and her ex's actions. Other than that, I'm currently working closely with Sylvia to turn things around at work, and so far it's going well. With her help, I compiled a document containing the relevant union clauses and an email explaining that what they're asking us to do for low census violates our contract and I will not tolerate it. Management never responded to it, but considering I was low census this afternoon and I didn't hear a peep from them about staying, I'd say they got the message and know that I'm done playing with stupid. Thanks again for all your comments. Feel free to ask questions that I might not have answered in this update. And in the comments, Riri Treetop says, Glad to hear things are taking a turn for the better in many aspects of your life. And OP replies, Same. Sylvia is honestly my hero, and I don't know what I would have done without her. She's a cool kid who vapes weed, swears like a sailor, and has a cute little Pomeranian named Oliver. PKK Bola 22 says, Glad you're fine. And OP replies, Yep. For the first time in months, things finally feel like they're going to be okay, and it doesn't feel like the sky is falling. I have a very smart and kind individual in my corner now who fully supports me and will do everything in her power to help me. Jojo Cruz 206 says, Just be careful. Your management might start to think of you as a troublemaker and start to more closely scrutinize your work. If anything else happens, make sure you document it. The time your manager spoke to you, what it was about, and whether or not it's something that could go in your personal record. Sylvia has probably already coached you on all of this, as she sounds like a very seasoned union rep. And completely amazing. Not the a-hole, of course. And OP replies, That's exactly why I didn't go to the union when this all started. I wanted to try and fix things without pissing everyone off. But once it became clear that they were going to be pissed regardless, I decided it was better for them to be mad and not be able to do anything about it than to have them be mad and be able to make my life hell. Alright, and I think that's where I leave today's episode, guys. As always, I do hope you had a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. I want you to tell me what you thought of this episode down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback, what you thought of these stories, what you would do in these situations. This has been Marky, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!